this magic body, it needs, it needs clear and, and vibrant energy to, to operate in this world. And be, living ecologically is to find that energy inside yourself and open it up and make it work. So your batteries get recharged, they get recharged, and you can operate in life. Okay, so you could you look at this uh, this human being. There's this is positive pole. It's, this is a battery. Okay, that's the positive yang pole of the battery, which is there, and that's a negative pole, which is there. And the diaphragm, the diaphragm moves the energy up and down, up and down, all the time. All the time the energy is moving up and down and up and down and up and down. And that creates, that creates, a, it sustains the body. It sustains the body. But even this body is going to die. And there's something more permanent in us. And this, so, so this is an arrangement of how consciousness, which is spirit, or um, you could say you could call it Tao, or you could call it Qi, consciousness. It's only just everything they say is a play of consciousness, of, consci of awareness, whether it's a plant jumping around, whether it's a, an animal. These, these are all aspects of consciousness at play, okay? So, Above the eyes, this is called the seat of the soul, here. The seat of the soul. And the soul is, um, is, is pure, ultimately, one, could, one might say that the soul is pure consciousness. It's not the consciousness of Barclay Digby. Barclay Digby started somewhere down here, below the eyes. Okay? When, when this little soul came in and had a certain mother and father and then some experiences and got born under the birth sign Taurus, so it was a bit physical, and then had some Gemini moon, so could read quite easy, you know, like reading quite a lot. And, you know, these are, this is the personality. It is not the soul. The soul is something that's always there, it's always observing and it's always free. And that is the thing in us that you could say, is the, perma the, the permanent thing that we all actually came here to cultivate. So, in fact, you know, from, from a real point of view, you could say, we're all farmers, but many of us leave our, our own farm, and then we go and farm, farm something out there, <laughs> and we don't, we don't put first things first. The first thing is to cultivate your own garden, and to take out the weeds. You know, and we only do this if we just wake up and we say, "Okay, let's get the, let's get our act together." Why am I a human being? What's so special about being in a human form, as opposed to being in an being an animal? Okay, what's the difference? Huh? Sapient. Sapient. Uh, I'm adding sapient. Sapient, yeah, wise. No. Homo, homo sapiens. <laughs> the wise, it means wisdom, eh? Mm. So, okay. And the homo bit? What's that? Human. Human, human yeah. wisdom. Great. So it's what you call reflective consciousness. So animals are programmed. They're programmed with a, with a lion program, or an elephant program, or a, or a, or a snail program. And it's a program and they stay in that. Okay? So, what is it that gives a human the faculty to, as you say, to reflect? Okay? So, in, in uh, ancient Ayurvedic teaching, in the Vedic teachings, they say that, okay, this is a consciousness field. The, the ruler and the emperor, the true emperor of this consciousness field, of this little world that I'm walking around in, and you are all walking around in. The real emperor lies above the eyes, and it's, it's always there, and that is the, your, your, your true nature, your divine nature, that, that doesn't identify, that's free from the body nature, or the Baki Digby, or the, or the uh, Carol whatever, or the, 
you know, so, so this, um, this arrangement here also gives us uh, some information about what's the difference between an animal and a human. So in the Vedic teaching they teach, this is a consciousness sphere. That if, if uh, one's born as a vegetable, then the water and earth consciousness is awake. That kind of consciousness is awake. It's awakened and it's operative. It's operating. If uh, they, uh, 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 this, this, this soul entity gets born in an animal kingdom into the animal sphere, then the fire and air chakras. So it's all, these are chakras. And um, on my screen here, I can show you uh, the chakra system. The, there you see there, okay, you can see here, here's a battery, okay, here's the battery. And these streams of energy, just like a battery, if you put a battery under a piece of paper and you put iron filings on it, this is what you get. It's just like a human aura, okay. Can you see that? Okay. So, within that battery system, there are, there's a yin and yang energy, which comes from the two sides of the brain. The soul sits above the brain, above the two. The soul is one. And the soul always seeks to bring everything together and understand the single principle of things. To understand there's one consciousness, there's one creator, there's one, lo there's one true lovingness, there's one true being. This is, this is soul awareness. But the soul sits above the eyes and then below the eyes the brain starts and there's two. There's a yin and a yang. And that's where this, uh, the, high, the chakra starts. The ajna, the first chakra, which is the chakra of <coughs> thinking and discrimination. Learning to be clear in one's thinking. And then the consciousness descends down into each level. The chakras, what are the chakras? How would you guys describe chakras in, in simple language? Energy, what then? Energy vortices. Energy vortices, okay. What else? Okay, think of a big electric charge. Say we've got a big current and we take it off the mains up there on the pole and we bring it in here and we, we want to operate a few machines. What do we need to do? Yeah, we need transistors. We need to break down the energy so it's not going to blow our little, our little radio up, you see. So the chakras are, they, they, just, they just slow energy down because the energy that's coming in the top of the head, the spirit energy is all powerful. And it, it can actually blow us up and everything can be destroyed. So the spirit energy is all powerful from the top chakra, what they call in Chinese teaching, Ba Hoi. The meeting of a hundred streams. Bahui. So it comes in here and then it gets stepped down to this first chakra. The energy is a bit lower and then it can operate. That energy can be used to operate the brain and the nervous system. And then it steps down another level and that energy can be used to operate the thyroid and the, and the, and the metabolic um, control system and, and the upper lungs. Okay, then it comes down to the heart center and the energy is on a certain frequency. So these are just, these crossover points are points of where the transformer, thank you, <coughs> breaks down the energy into, into uh, packages that work for each organ. So you could say that these organs down here, they operate on a lower voltage, a lower voltage than the ones up there. So, like in healing, in healing, it's, it's very important to understand that a higher frequency can cure and destroy a block in a lower frequency. But if you're on the same frequency and there's a block and you want to, you want to free it, you can't do it unless you go to a higher frequency. So the upper uh, cures the lower and aligns the lower. And that's a, that's a kind of principle that operates. Even in hand healing, there's a Chinese method, which my wife uses, which is 
based on that understanding that you activate certain points above to cure certain disturbances in the organ system below. Okay, and you look for these points and then sometimes you'll need to go below the, the problem and get the energy going through. So, um, so we, we get back to the animal thing that I was talking about and I lost the point. But the, the, so so the, the, in the Vedic teaching they teach that everything is consciousness. This whole body is consciousness. The psychology of the human body. You know, there are, there are so many words like, um, you say, uh, oh, he's lily-livered, huh? or he's, he's, uh, he's a bit yellow, he's a bit, he's, he's heel in Afrikaans, you know, means he's chicken, he's frightened, okay, lily-livered. So the liver, the liver and gall, you say, he's got gall, he's got gall, to stand up here and talk shit, I mean, he's got gall. <laughs> so, so the liver, the liver has a lot to do with courage and self-expression, okay. And it's interesting in Chinese medicine, when a person has some problem with the thyroid or the throat, you look at the liver, the gun, because the liver uh, opens up into the throat and the ether, it, it holds that etheric energy, etheric, ether energy. It's the re receiver of ether. So you could say all the organs are consciousness fields and their aspects, they're like stalks or little manifestations of consciousness. So the lungs are a manifestation of the consciousness that wants to connect with other people. And let's try this noise. Hello. And then, and then see what happens. So you watch when a baby learns to talk, it starts making noises and then seeing what happens. And it says, Ma, and, and Mum gets, Oh, and it says, Mummy. And, and, and then it thinks, Oh, okay, Ma. And uh, so, so this... This urge to communicate, where does it come from? It comes from your lungs, from your area. And what happens when you lose somebody you love? What happens? You go, oh. Oh. And then you get a bad cough. You get something, something goes wrong with the lungs. And often, I often find um, somebody getting a chronic lung problem when they've had some grief, they've lost somebody, they're feeling disconnected, they're feeling like they're not belonging, that sort of thing. So the lungs have, are, are an organ which gives a consciousness of belonging and connecting. So every organ has, has its, its... This is your brain, from here to there. So it's not, you know, we think this is a brain here. Yeah, it's not. This is just a re central relay station of nerves. That's all. The brain, the real working brain, the, the, which is the working consciousness, and our personality works through all our organs. So, for example, if somebody has a very strong spleen, the spleen belongs to the earth element, the earth. It's got the same vibration as earth. It's on that frequency. If you've got a strong spleen, you can make lots of money, or you can be practical, or you can, you can build a house, or you, can, you, you get your act together, you know. If you've got a weak spleen, and then you've got a strong air or lungs, then you all make big ideas all the time, and you never manifest anything. <laughs> so... <laughs> so uh, so even, you know, our consciousness as personalities, it operates like that. I mean, if I see a patient and I do their birth chart, I'm looking at what's the wiring of this person? What's their little biosphere? Are they, uh, you know, is there a lot of heat and air and there's not much water and earth? Then they're just going to be taking off all the time up there, you know. Or is there too much earth? And, and too much water, and there's not enough fire. How do you know? So, so then you want to you want to turn up the fire. You know, you want to turn up, get more air in the person, or you know. So we all a little walking ecological garden. 